we have pretty much guaranteed that. Now, a companion story. Do you remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, last November, I made a big deal with it. And I'm, I, I remain surprised. I can't believe, and I really mean this, I can't believe that this was not focused on more. Uh, not not by the mainstream media, of course, but rather by conservative media. This this was a column by by Thomas B. Ensel, who used to write for the Washington Post, now big at the Huffington and Puffington Post, and he had a piece in the New York Times, which means the regime wanted it there. He he works for Obama in a way, but there's a there's a tie in, and the, the piece. Now your regular listener here, you've heard me reference it many times, but it stayed in its own vacuum. The piece was a tantamount admission that the Obama campaign had written off the working white voters block. Just written them off. They were the bitter clingers. They knew back in November that they were not, they're not even going to campaign for the working white voters of America. And I re- that was so stunning to me to have a, an incumbent president instruct his campaign instruct one of their acolytes to head to the op-ed pages of the new york times and admit that that they weren't going to seek the votes of white working class voters reagan democrat a lot of these people are democrats they're working class blue collar democrats they were being written off and the majority of them voted for Obama in 2008. Now, this takes me to this piece by David Paul Kuhn at uh, Real Clear Politics. He's he's the chief political correspondent for Real Clear Politics. And he's the author of a book, The Neglected Voter, White Men and the Democrat Dilemma. And he builds on it. Listen to this. President Kardashian does not currently have enough white support to win re-election even if he retains his minority base from 2008. At the same time, electoral data indicate that Mitt Romney has not yet attracted enough of these white voters to capitalize on Obama's weakness. Weird, that is, because MSNBC just suspended the Politico guy, or Politico just suspended a Politico guy, was on MSNBC, some Black reporter for the Politico said, eh, Romney, you can tell he's just not comfortable except around white people. We were talking about Romney's appearance at the Latino convention. This guy said, you can just tell Romney doesn't like being around anybody but white people. Let me tell you something. I'm uncomfortable in a room of white liberals. It's liberals that make me uncomfortable and feel out of place. It's not racially oriented stuff. I don't, anyway, this guy, the Politico supposedly has suspended him. Probably the same degree that NBC employees who doctor tapes get suspended. Pundits often note that Romney can't win with his current level of Hispanic support. And it may be true, but so is the converse. Obama cannot win with his level of white support unless white swing voters withhold their votes from Romney as well. Well, what are the odds of that? What are the odds of white swing voters not voting Today, fewer whites back Obama than any Democrat candidate since Walter Mondale. Romney does not need to emulate Reagan to win. Should he match Reagan's share of the white vote in 1984, Romney would rout Obama. That's how bad it is. They knew back in November that the white working class vote was lost. But this is a stunning statistic. Fewer whites back up. Now, this guy was going to end all of this. He was going to end the racial divide. He was going to end the divide, the partisan divide. And, of course, we all know that it's gotten worse. Now, America has changed since the days of Rinaldo's Magnus. Non-Hispanic whites were 89% of the electorate when Reagan first won the White House in 1980. They were 85% of the electorate in uh, 1998. By 2008, whites were 74%, and that shift has upended the electoral landscape. And you look at the loser, for example, Michael Dukakis. In 1988, George H.W. Bush's margin of victory exceeded Obama's in 2008. But if Obama... Did you know that? Did you know in 1988, Bush 41 won by a bigger margin Obama did in 2008? 
But if Obama's level of white support in 2012 equals Dukakis, and all else remains the same from 2008, Obama would likely narrowly win. He'd lack a mandate, he'd risk immediate lame duck status, but he would survive with white support that once surrendered Democrats unless... What if Obama doesn't even match Dukakis with whites? That's the dynamic of 2012, and that's what Obama faces. This electorate has a a white floor, and it's broken for this president. Democrats can't depend on demographics to save them. And that's what Obama is depending on. He's depending on a coalition of every fringe minority you can find out there. And he's written off the American mainstream. Not racially, but demographically and, and uh, politically. He's just, he's just written them off. You know, the United Nations is thinking, the United Nations is thinking of saying publicly Obama should give back his peace prize because of the drone attacks. I'm not kidding. I got this story coming up in the stack. Obama's, my point is he's losing support everywhere you turn. Now, Mr. Kuhn says the white margin to watch is 61-39. That's the rough break-even point. Obama likely needs more than 39% of the white vote to reassure himself of winning election. Romney needs 61% of whites to assure Obama's defeat, or at least 60.5%. But as we sit here now, and this is a uh, uh, result of culminating a lot of uh, collating a lot of polling data, Obama's white support right now is gone. Doesn't have a prayer. This could be why Peter Orzog, the former head of the Obama Office of Management and Budget, is calling for voting to be made mandatory to make sure Obama gets the black and Hispanic turnout that he needs. He is actually suggesting that. i got to take a quick time out. We'll be back as Open Line Friday rolls on right after this. Doing the 